Everyone who visits Peru has heard of the Incas. No tourist can ignore their legacy. It's the country's principal attraction. The Inca citadel of Machu Picchu is visited by around a million tourists every year. Almost all of those visitors pass through Cusco, the one-time capital of the Inca's impressive empire, where their walls still stand. The finely sculpted stones fit together like the pieces of a puzzle. And overlooking the city, the fort of Sacsayhuaman. Visiting Cusco, one can't help but be impressed by the beauty and monumental scale of Inca architecture. Inevitably, one asks oneself the question, what happened to that civilization which built these structures and the kings who commanded them to be built? Greedy for gold and power, the Spanish invaders vanquished this advanced civilization. The Catholic Church replaced the ancestor worship of mummies with its saints, and the conquistadors killed or banished its leaders. But the descendants of those kings live on. Alfredo Inca Roca claims he can trace his lineage back nearly 500 years to the Inca nobility. In principio debo manifestarte de que mi originalidad, mi descendencia está acreditada con documentos. Y tengo genealogía hecha hasta 1560. Solamente faltaría uh, 17 años para completar la llegada de los españoles al Cusco, eh, que fue en 1543. It's a heritage which he claims was recognized in 1545 by the Holy Roman Emperor Carlos V, who was also the king of Spain. The king wrote this lengthy missive, granting royal status to Inca Roca. Carlos V dice, yo no os mandé a matar reyes, sino a servir reyes, reyes, ¿no? Entonces, es una cosa bonita. Y, pero igual avasallaron, pues, no, no hubo mucho. Along with the Pachacutics, the Maita Capacs, and other royal families, the Inca Rockers were turned out of Cusco's historic center. This place, now the Catholic Archbishop's Palace, was once his family home. Inca Roca claims. The noble Inca families were relocated and given land nearby in San Sebastián. Inca Roca and his family have been here ever since. He was even the local mayor. Nunca hemos tenido vergüenza. ¿Por qué? Si somos más bien privilegiados, entonces debemos andar con la cabeza levantada, ¿no? Somos gente privilegiada porque per somos descendientes de una cultura que ha sido grande en, en la antigüedad. As a younger man, Inca Roca played the role of an Inca lord in a reenactment of the Inti Raimi Sun Festival marking winter solstice. Call it Inca pride, it's infectious in San Sebastián, says its current mayor and Marcicus. La gran familia Inca se ha regocijado tanto en el distrito de San Sebastián como en el distrito de San Jerónimo. O sea, como quien dice, se han replegado acá. Todavía conservó esa mística de no mezclarse con otras personas. Por eso que fácilmente no ingresó el apellido castellano acá. Por eso que decimos que San Sebastián se ha convertido en la cuna de la incanidad. But that sentiment is not nationwide, says Dutch historian Ronald Elwood, who has painstakingly traced the bloodlines of the royal Incas to the present day. These were a little bit more the surnames of the servants, which in the end were the surnames of the original rulers. So that is symbolically, of course, quite something that you go from ruler to being servant. And that is the, bit, the way people know about surnames like this. Well, first, After years of research, poring over parish and notaries' records dating back centuries, Elwood tracked down several descendants whose lives have no royal trappings. Roberta Waman Rimanchi Tupahuacayo inherits the royal blood from her mother. While many chose to improve their social status by having a Spanish surname, she refused to change, despite being teased at school. Muy orgullosa. Yo no tengo vergüenza de mi apellido, aunque siempre en otros lugares a veces se ríen porque 
es tan difícil de pronunciarlo, ¿no? Es tan difícil, pero no, yo me siento feliz, orgullosa de ser sebastiana, de ser cusqueña y tengo familiares que están tan lejos, que han progresado, son profesionales con el apellido y me siento feliz, feliz, muy feliz. And her ancestors' customs of keeping the dearly departed close to home are kept alive by her 79-year-old father, Mariano. Here are the skulls of his mother, brother and grandmother. Customs run deep and the Incas left their mark like no other civilization in this part of the Americas. But DNA research shows only a handful of people can actually claim royal Inca descent. Peruvian geneticist Ricardo Fujita has found DNA correlations between some but not all of the families who claim Inca ancestry. Those who say they can trace their bloodline back to Huayna Capac, the last Inca. We were selecting the people that we thought that were directly linked to Huayna Capac by for the patrilineal uh, line, no? the patrilineal way, means the father of the father of the father and, and so on. Backed by the National Geographic's Genographic Project, the investigation lacks one crucial DNA source, an Inca mummy, explains Fujita. The problem is that the Spanish uh, burn and disappear all the Incas remains from Huayna Capac and their sons uh, and daughters too. So that's because uh, they didn't want these people uh, uh, at the time, they, they were worshipped, no? uh, so, uh, and Spanish, they were uh, imposing the Catholic uh, uh, religion. They tried to disappear all remains of the Incas because they were sacred. Nonetheless, based on Elwood's groundbreaking research, Fujita has traced two groups descended from the 11 original Inca clans. He and his team are reconstructing part of Peru's history, he says. The official history in Peru, it comes when the Europeans arrived here. So here in, in Peru in, in 1532. But before that, we have 14,000 years of history that is not recorded by in writing, but is recorded in our DNA. So that's why we are reconstructing the history of people that does, doesn't have history. Not only the Incas, but we have uh, reconstructing people from all over Peru, from the coast, from the Andes, from the Amazon. Back in Cusco, archaeologists are uncovering the homes and graves of the everyday people who were part of this empire. Amelia Perez is the chief archaeologist at Cotacayi. Cotacalle es un poblado de la gente común y corriente, de esa gente que ponía su mano de obra para ir a trabajar al centro histórico, para ir a enseñar al centro histórico, porque esta gente que está teniendo es de todo tipo, no solo de toda región, de, toda, de diferentes regiones, sino también tenemos canteros, tenemos ceramistas, gente que trabajaba textiles, tenemos gente que hacía joyas, entonces hay una mixtura de gente que está viviendo acá. The archaeologists have discovered ceramics from other cultures. Chimu from Peru's arid north, Nazca from the coast, and even depictions of animals from the jungle. Cusco was a melting pot for all the empire's subjects. What's remarkable about this find is it shows perhaps the true fragility of the Inca Empire. These relics show that the workers here came from cultures all across the empire's territory, and some of them may have been all too willing to swap sides with the arrival of the Spanish conquest. With initial structures dating from 1532 to 40 years later, this site and its incredible yield of material charts the cultural transformation that came with the bloody transition to Spanish leadership. The more that's discovered, the more it's clear the Inca legacy included all Peru's cultures and peoples. Y creo que en estos sitios nosotros lo que hacemos es eh, aspirar todo ese esfuerzo que ellos han tenido, aspirar pues, como ellos pensaban. Entonces hace que nosotros también un poco meditemos y en cierto modo cambiemos algunas cosas que, 
que vamos haciendo en base al, al esfuerzo que ellos han hecho. Being descended from Inca royalty is a particular distinction, but knowing your roots, whatever they may be, helps Peruvians identify more with their past. In a nation divided by class and race, it's important, says Elwood. If these families could help in some way or another to strengthen a bit this element of national identity, of course, nobility has no meaning as such anymore because it's a republic. 200 years has passed since the colonial times, almost 500 since the conquest. But still, the country um, has very clear distinctions between different groups. And it's always good, I think, for a national identity that you have this link with the past. Peru's spectacular Inca architecture draws millions of visitors from around the world. What's now clear is that while the royal Incas oversaw the construction, they must share the legacy with common people from all over Peru who played a part in building these wonders of the ancient world.